Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we are going to take a look at the RG350, a new handheld that I think you're going to enjoy. Also, stay tuned till the end of the video, we got a free download for you, so let's check it out. Let's take a look at the features of the RetroGain 350. It has a 3.5 inch, 320 by 240 pixel IPS screen with super tempered glass. The CPU is a 4770 dual 1 gigahertz processor. It has 512 megs of DDR2 RAM. Internal storage used for the firmware is on a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. And there is an external micro SD slot that will handle up to a 64 gigabyte micro SD card for your games. There's also a 2500 milliamp hour battery that will give you approximately 6 hours of usage. Some of the supported systems include the PS1, Final Burn Alpha, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Super Famicom, Sega Mega Drive, NES, SNES, the PC Engine, and of course MAME for All. While the headphones work, the video out does not, either on the AV or HDMI. Just wanted to let you know early on in the video. Let's unbox the RG350. Mine came all the way from China. It took probably about 20 days for it to arrive. In the meantime, Amazon started selling them. I should have ordered it there instead. Taking a look at the box here, we have the console, the charging cable, and a user spaniel. The links that I put down below will also include a micro SD card that has 2500 games. So, anyway, this one did not. Uh, it does have an HDMI out and an AV output, but neither one of those work, as I mentioned earlier. As you can see here, you have a D pad as well as two joysticks and your game buttons. Here are the specs of those I didn't highlight earlier are the stereo speakers, of course, the headphone output. And let's see, USB Type-C for charging. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like. All right, we'll just set it here and take a look at what's in the box. Here's the USB cable. The USB Type-C connection. Very cool. And the manual. Uh, you can read that if you want to. I'm going to glance over it. Cool. Alright, let's get back to the handheld. Ah, finally. Here we go. Ooh, that's pretty. I really like the design. On the top here, you have a USB port here, HDMI, your headphone or AV jack, and USB. And then you have on the bottom side, your power button, your micro SD slot, your volume down and up, and a reset button. And of course, you also have these speakers down here, stereo speakers. Well, let's go ahead and power it on and see what some of the included applications look like. And to keep this video steady, I'm going to go ahead and put this handheld on a stand right here. That way it won't move around a lot on you while I am recording this video. So let's take a look at some of the applications. This Dingux Commander. That's a handy little application, a little file manager type app. This FF Play is a video player, so I put on a few videos here to just kind of take a look. And the video player apparently works, which is great. 
Let's get ready to play! My unit only had a few indie games installed, so basically I used Win32 Disk Imager to copy my RG300 microSD off to a file. Then I inserted a new microSD card and wrote the image directly to this new microSD card, so I had an exact copy of what I was using on the RG300. Then I took it and plugged it into the microSD slot on the RG350. And boom, I was good to go with all the games I had on the RG300. The buttons feel really good on this unit, by the way. The D-pad and the joysticks and the buttons, everything works well. The placement of the L and R buttons are nice. I don't have any issues at all with the buttons. Alright, so let's power it up and start playing. We'll hit the right bumper button and switch over to the emulators. And just a quick demonstration here of how to set it up. Select GBA, go to Media, SD Card, and wherever you put your ROMs for that particular emulator. So I'll go into ROMs and go to GBA. And there you go. Then hit the Start button if you want to go back, which we will. And we'll go to the FBA or Final Burn Alpha emulator. And we'll select Metal Slug 2. We'll press select to insert a quarter and start to start the game. And we'll press A over here and select the character by pressing A. And here we go. It plays exactly how I remember it in the arcade. <laughs> I don't want to bore you too much with my lousy gameplay here, so we're going to move on. To exit FBA, you press the select, start, and the left and right button on the top, and then you can move down to exit and exit the game. Now we'll move on to the FCEUX emulator, which is the NES Famicom emulator. And let's fire up Super Mario Brothers 3. Again, this is for the NES. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of these games that I'm very good at. My apologies. I didn't play a lot of consoles back in the day. I did play a lot of arcade games, though. But I don't see any screen tearing or anything. I mean, it's it's just a beautiful screen. And you can exit this game by pressing select and start. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll load up the Game Boy emulator. And you can hit the right bumper for the menu. And then we're going to go to settings. Then go to select scaler. And we'll put it on full screen smooth. And then we'll save the settings, press A, and we'll back out. And we'll go back into Donkey Kong Land and give the Game Boy emulator a try. Pretty cool. It plays pretty much exactly how I ever remember. Alright, so let's take a break from NES and move on to something you're probably looking forward to, and that's the PlayStation Emulator. 
And we'll go down to check out one that struggled quite a bit on the RG300. And that's Crash Bandicoot. Now we're going to go into the settings here by pressing select and start. And I want to go in here to the GPU and see if the frames per second are at 60 frames per second or not. I think that'll be a good test to see how well the RG350 performs while playing Crash. So let's go ahead and fire it up. I skipped some of the intro here. Trying to save a little bit of time. Notice at the top you see the frames per second. 60 by 60. This is looking good. Alright, now this is what matters, the gameplay. Let's see if it remains at 60 by 60. Alright. Frame rate looks great. Again, I, I did review this on the RG300 review, and it was virtually unplayable on the RG300. And looks like it's running very well on the 350. I'm impressed. Not on my gameplay, though. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, I think that pretty much does it on that particular game. Let's move on to Twisted Metal. Again, the frames per second are at the top. Staying pretty steady at between 59 and 60 frames per second, which is awesome. Oops. All right, I think we can conclude PS1 games play well on the RG350. Let's give the SNES a try, and we'll go down to, uh, let's go to Donkey Kong Country. The animation here is very smooth. I think we should go into settings and do the same thing. Let's take a look at the frames per second. So we'll go up here and turn on frames per second. And yep, 61 by 60. Holding steady, looks good. Gameplay is awesome. I don't know how it can be 61 by 60, but hey. I'll take it. <laughs> Alright, now let's move on to MAME for All. This is the emulator I play the most personally. I am going to cut the audio on this one just because it's playing the theme song to Star Wars. I'll put a link up above for my review on the Star Wars Arcade 1-Up if you're interested. But yeah, I mean, this one played very well. There was a little bit of audio crackling uh, when the voiceovers came in, you know, when Luke or Obi-Wan said something. But it didn't take away from the gameplay at all.
and the audio was not a major issue, but it was something I noticed, so I want to mention that. I wish I could play the audio here, but don't need another copyright issue. All right, so let's move on to another game here. And this one is my favorite. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this intro screen is the first time you run it, it's just going to stop right here. So you're going to have to exit and then go back in a second time after it says restoring factory defaults. Now, once you do that, you can then go in here, say input this game, and you can change or remap the controls. Now, the P1, left, up, down, all that, you can leave that one alone. But the player one, right up, right down, right left, I had to map to the buttons over here because it would not map to the joystick itself in the lower right joystick. I don't know why. Uh, if, if you have an idea on how to make that work, please comment below because I'd love to use that right joystick. Uh, but to get it to work for this video, I've mapped it to the buttons. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the game. And it's fully playable this way. It's just, ideally, you would be using the right joystick. Alright, so now let's go to this Dingix commander. If you ever screw up your uh, MAME for All configuration, you can go in here and delete this MAME for All, and it'll wipe out your entire configuration for MAME for All reason why I'm showing you this is because I did that and screwed things up. So what you want to do after that is then select your SD card, go back to your ROMs and reset your main for all directory wherever your ROMs are installed and hit the start button here to set the directory. Then once you do that, you're good. But you may have to remap individual games if, if needed. All right, so let's play some Galaga. And as you can see here, it looks great. Looks really good on this beautiful display. And now we're going to go ahead and try some Marble Madness. Of course, we're going to be using the left thumb controller to move the marble around. And it actually works really well with Marble Madness. I was impressed. As you may recall, in the arcade, you would typically use a trackball, but this is the closest thing we can get, I guess, on a handheld. All right, now we're going to try the same thing with uh, Millipede. I didn't find that uh, my game suffered a whole lot using this little thumb stick. actually did fairly decently. All right, now let's try some Moon Patrol. Another classic from the early 80s. Alright guys, well that pretty much wraps up this video on the gameplay. However, there is something that I'd like to show you. At the beginning of the video, I promised you a free download. Well, this is it, folks. This is a custom-designed stand for your retro handhelds. And it fits all kinds of different handhelds, which we'll cover in just a moment. If you own a 3D printer, it's free for you to print right now, if you have one at work, or you can even click this Order This Printed button, which I've never tried. Here's an example of it, holding the RG350. And now we'll put the Pocket Go on it. And while we got the Pocket Go out, let's go ahead and look at the screen size difference here. Pretty big difference. And let's see, will it fit the RG300? Sure it will. And let's go ahead and compare the screen again. And the Retro Flag GPI case is another one of my favorites. I really love this device. But to be fair to all the others, let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, big difference. <laughs> all right, so what are my thoughts on the RG350? Well, on the pro side, it has a beautiful screen, great performance on the device, it has excellent sound, 
The controls work extremely well. On the con side, I would have to say the inconsistent menus. That was a bit of a problem. And of course, the AV and HDMI output don't work at all. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative, and I hope you enjoyed the 3D printed gaming stand if you choose to print that out. If you want to let me know you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, we shall see you very soon.